Hey everyone, in this video, we will see how to create forms and how to submit forms in React. But before we start that, I want to mention that I do have a blog. The purpose of this blog is to actually document any tutorials I'm making uh, in written form. So in case you want to reference something, you can check out here. And this can also reach out to you direct in your inbox. So what you can do, you can click here and you can put your email and that way you can subscribe to this blog. So whenever I post something, you will get a notification uh that i posted something new currently i have few tutorials over here but uh my goal is to add more and more tutorials so that you can we can have like a centralized repository of all my tutorials so that's the purpose of this blog and uh yeah let's get started with today's tutorial which is how to use forms in react interesting okay so okay so have this component forms which i created coming here if you're already following the series you know that i have this these bunch of components i added before so i just added a new forms.jsx file here which will act as a forms component and then in my app.js i'm just importing that form so that we can render it on our screen so if i open the local host and let me make it a little big so that you can see it and i don't need to keep it open so i can close that guy Okay, so let's see what I am doing here. So first of all, let me show you how to use this form. So let's say your name is Sarinjit and your last name is Singh. And then when you summon this form, you get an alert and which shows a full name, first and last name, Sarinjit so Singh. So that's the, that this is what we are building. There are many ways to build uh, this form. One of the ways you can build this form is uh, the uncontrolled way. The, uh, it is a React terminology, the uncontrolled way. In the un uncontrolled way of doing things, we don't use React's uh, use state or other hooks. We use the use ref hook. So use ref hook is is pretty interesting hook. What it does, it, it grabs the element from DOM and with the help of this current property, you, we can get the value. Let me close that. So we can grab the value of uh, our element. So if you, if you already, if you have not watched my video on use ref hook you can watch it here i'll add the link somewhere here so that you can go through that and uh, so that you can better understand what's going on here okay so i'm assuming you know what use ref hook is so the purpose of use ref hook is to create references that's what we like use ref like create references and use is the terminology we use in react to declare if something is a hook and hook is nothing but a a way of uh encapsulate encapsulizing your oh, what's the word encapsulization of your logic yeah something like that so it will encapsulate your logic inside this so that you can use this use ref hook you know on different parts of your program so that's the purpose of hook so hook is just a way of importing logic in in react so yeah don't get confused or intimidated by these terms so first of all, what we're doing here, so let's let's see the HTML first. So we have a form element, pretty standard, and then we have an on submit on it. So whenever we submit the form, whenever we click the submit button, this handle submit function will run. And then we have few labels. We have two labels, the first name label and the last name label. In the first name label, we have our ID. We have the type, which is text in this case, and then a reference. And reference, we are referencing to our, this first name ref. So that whenever we change anything here, whenever I add anything here, that value will be stored inside this first name ref variable. Hope this is, uh, hope this makes sense. Similarly for the last name as well. So whatever changes I'll make here will be stored inside this ref, this last name ref variable. And then with the help of current property, we can get the value. So that's all you need to understand for now in case of use ref that we will, with the help of use ref, we can get the current property. Because see, the, the, the property of the first name, the value will change because like, first of all, I'll put S and then I put A, R, A. So this is keep on changing, right? And that will be stored inside this first name variable. And at the end, we will just uh, show that as an alert. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. You can even print out over here, but we are not doing that so that for the sake of simplicity. All right, so I think that's pretty easy <laughs> to understand. 
Um, so this is the uncontrolled way of, of submitting forms in, in React. Okay, so let's see the other way of doing or submitting forms in React. Okay, so this is the controlled way of managing a form state. So in this, so in this example, we have our, we're using, first of all, the use state hook. And I, I, I think I already made a video on use state hook, so you can go back and watch that video if, if that is not clear to you. But in the simple terms, whenever you're using the use state hook, you, will, you need to take care of two things. First of all, the variable. So this variable will store whatever. It can store a string, it can store a boolean, it can store an array, an object, whatever you want to give it to uh, the, this variable. And this is a set function. So whenever you want to change this variable, you can only do it with the setter function. You can only do it with the set first name function. So this is a function and this is a variable. So this is the most important thing you always need to take care of whenever you try to understand how your state hook works. All right, let's see the form first. So a few things will remain same. First of all, we have the on submit. So this will remain the same. And then we will have our labels, first name, last name, but few things are different here. You see, now we, are not using the reference. We're not using the use ref hook. What we're using is uh, we're putting, we're using this on change method. So whenever I change anything here, that value will be stored. So that, sorry, that whenever I add anything or change anything, that will be captured by this handle first name function. So let's see what it does. So handle first name is here. So handle first name will grab the event, whatever event we have put. So right now we, event is anything a user do uh, on a DOM. So right right now we are typing. So that will be the event. So event will have a property called target, and target will store a value. So right now, whenever if I put anything here, let's say I put John, oh not here, if I put John, so the setter function will automatically store that value inside the first name. So this will right now has John in it. And same if I put the last name Smith and the last name will have Smith in it. And what we are doing here, so we are combining them. So if I submit it, oh yeah, so we'll, you'll get John Smith in return. So another thing uh, we missed in previous acceleration is use of this event dot uh, prevent default. So if I remove that, if I, if I don't use that, what will happen? So let's see, let's refresh it. And I put same, I put like John, and then I put Smith, and then I submit, and then it says John Smith. But as soon as I do that, it clears the input field. But we don't want to do that because if let's say you're you're printing those names here, let's say you're putting like first name John Smith here, as soon as you submit it, it will show it for a second and then it will be gone because that's the default way of submitting form in, in HTML. That the purpose of a submit a form is to uh, trigger an event but right now we, we don't want we are not making any calls to api or anything like that right so that's why we need to put this uh so that we can prevent the default you'll see this method uh, at many place uh whenever you're using forms because we don't want to do the default way of submitting forms okay the another thing you need to see here is this value so value is whatever we are putting inside the input field. So let's say right now we're giving it the first name, whatever a user type, this, that will come here. So let's say we, we, we delete that and then give it a value of let's say John. So what will happen is when as soon as you uh, refresh the page, it will get this as a default value, but we don't want that, right? But in case sometimes you need to have some kind of default value if you want, then you can change this and add whatever value you want to add. But right now we don't want to do that. So we can just, uh, change it back to first name. So that is the, I would say the easiest way of uh, handling forms in React. Uh, it's not the best way because see, we have like two variables. What we can do is I'll show you shortly like how to make them in, inside like one object and then you don't need to like take care of like two different set of variables. So, but this is a legitimate way of uh, submitting forms in React with the help of the use state hook. So let's see the next way of handling the state in React Forms. So as I mentioned in the previous part of the video that we don't need to create like two separate variables and then create the setter function of that. What we can do is we can create a form object which will have this property, first name and last name. And if we see the, the, the HTML, it's pretty similar just now in case of value because we're using object. Instead of first name, we're using form.firstName because the form will have this first name. And then similarly for, for 
last name and then on change we will be handling instead of two function because in previously we have like first name and set function of uh, set first name last name and set last name we don't need to do that one function can handle that so for that let's create a function called handle form change let's see what this handle form change does so what's happening here is we have our hand, handle form change function which will accept the event so whatever a uh, user will put inside here and it will update the form so first of all in need to update the form we need to copy the all the previous value of form so in case it's blank and after that what we're doing is we're grabbing the id so let's see what is the id here so for the for this case the id will be first name so this will be the first name and then whatever value we put here will store as the value so let's let's console log that to make it uh, to make it understand better so to understand it better So I put a console log here and then uh, I'm, I have opened my developer tools. So what will happen if I type something here? So think what will happen? What we are doing right now? So we are grabbing the ID and in our case, what is the ID, the first name? So if I, let's say if I anything here, let's say I type John, what I'll get, I'll get first name. And then let's see what will be the, the value. So let's say we add that as well. So, so event.target.target value save that refresh this guy and if i type something what will get we'll get the id as well as the value so whenever we so so right now whatever we put inside the first name will be stored inside the id which is first name and then whatever we put in last name will be get inside the last name so let's see if i put smith here then it will put the id it will take the id's last name and add that input uh, whatever the user has put inside the, the input box and if i submit that we'll get john smith in return because currently if you see the first name will become john as we can see it here and the last name will become smith so that's how so that's another way of uh submitting or updating uh, a form state in react so i think that's it for today's video i hope i didn't make things too complicated but yeah if you can just go back and read this document uh, what i did here you can understand it even better in case you still have some doubts or you can always google it you can always read different documents you can read uh, different blogs just to get the more idea like what's going on here but yeah but if in case you still have question or anything just post inside uh, the comment section and that's all i'll see you in the next video thank you and yeah don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter i am putting a lot of efforts here now <laughs> yeah okay thank you guys